Good day, everyone, and welcome to Libra Academy YouTube channel once again. If you are joining us for the first time, this YouTube channel is an academic channel where we make learning easier for students of higher institutions and especially our dearest institution, University of Libra. So today we'll be talking about vector. And this particular topic can be found in your physics 115, which is magnets for under level students. So we'll talk about vectors, we'll talk about addition, subtraction, and multiplication of vectors. And we'll also talk about how to resolve forces in the form of vectors. Resolving forces that are acting parallel to each other in the same direction and resolving forces that are acting parallel to each other in different directions. We we'll also look at forces that are inclined at an angle to each other. Then finally we can check for planar forces which are different forces like when we have more than two forces inclined at an angle and acting on the plane. So to start with I want us to start with the resolution of, resolution of forces before we finally move to unit vector. Resolution of forces. We can have forces resolved in three ways. What do we mean by resolution of forces? You would have other the word resultant. Resultant means you are putting two or more forces together to have just one magnitude. As we all know, the force is a scalar quantity. Now, case one is when you have two forces acting in the same direction. When you draw a line of force like this, the size of the line indicates how large the force is and the arrow head indicates its direction. So we have the first one like this and the second one like this. It indicates that this first one is larger in magnitude than the second one. And since they are acting in the same direction, then we can add together. It's just, for example, when you are pushing the car, like two people pushing the car, the two of you are pushing the car in the same direction. So your forces complement each other to have a resultant to finally push the car in that direction. So if this is one new thing, or let me say two new things, and this is one new thing. So the resultant R will be one plus two. Everything in new thing, this will be three new things. It's adding vectors in the same direction. Remember, these two vectors are not inclined at any angle to each other. The angle between them is zero. So the second case is when they are acting in different direction. When they are acting in different direction. This one is acting in this direction. Then we have the other one acting in the other direction. Like this. If this is two new things, this is one new thing. Then we have to subtract because they are not in the same direction this time around. So you have two minus one new thing gives you one new thing. So that is when they are acting at different direction. The third case is when you have vectors inclined at an angle to each other. Let's say we have the first vector like this. The second vector like this. Then, if this is three kilometer, this is four kilometer, for instance, then your resultant will be the hypotenuse of the triangle. Now, your act of find resultant in this case is very simple because your hypotenuse from Pythagoras theorem. This is how to label this hypotenuse opposite and adjacent. From Pythagoras theorem, hypotenuse square is equal to opposite square plus adjacent square. That means you are going to square the two other sides and find the square root to give you your hypotenuse. So it means our R, which is resultant, will be equal to 3 square plus 4 square. Then you find the square root. That's how to calculate that for resultant of you know, um, forces acting at different direction. This is a uh, very simple cases, but we have a bit complicated one. 
that when you have forces like this, then you have the third one, you have a force. Let's say this is an angle of 30 degrees. Now, here we have two coordinates. We have the y axis, we have the x axis. Now, this is the force. Let's say this force is force of 10 Newton. Or let me just represent as A alone. Let's just say this is force A. Now, we can, add, we can resolve this particular force in two ways. Because if you look at it, this force is not going in the X direction, neither is it going in the Y direction. So we may want to know that, okay, if this force, we, we want to find the effective force in X direction, or we find the effective force in Y direction. This simply means we are looking at this line like this, as if we want to bend it downward and look at the force we have that time. Or we want to bend it upward vertically and look at what force we are going to have that time. It's very simple to do. That means we are having two cases now. First case is resolving this force into the x direction, which is the horizontal component. When you resolve forces in f direction, you take cos of the angle. So it means your fx. It means force in x direction is equal to f cos theta. The force cos of the angle. And if it is in y direction, fy, then you're going to have f sine theta. As simple as that. So now we have fx, we have fy. What will now be our resultant? Resultant r will be equal to the square root of what? fx squared plus fy squared. It's just as simple as what we have on the board. So we have been able to resolve this force into horizontal components into vertical components. Then the result will be the square of each of these forces and finally find their square root. Let me give you an example. For example, you have that on your screen where we have a force. You can see the diagram there. You have an aircraft flies with a velocity, an aircraft flies with a velocity of 500 meter per second in a direction n 30 degree east. It means 30 degree northeast. Then now you are asked to calculate the effective velocity in the north and eastern direction. You can see this is the question on the board. We have the force, 500 meter per second. 500 meter per second. Now, in the northern direction, it means you are resolving vertical. In the eastern direction, you are resolving horizontally. So what are we going to have? For Fx, which is the horizontal, we're going to have 500 cos 30 degree. In the FY direction, we're going to have 500 sine 30 degree. To give you 250 meter per second, this is going to give you 433 or so meter per second. As simple as that. So, this is resolving force into vert vertical and horizontal component. Now, the third case is when we look at forces, coplanar forces acting at the same point. That is, we have more than two forces acting at the same point. How are we going to do that? Now, you apply the same method that we use here. What am I saying? When you have a force like this, you have another one in this direction. You have another one in this direction. Sorry. And you have another one in this direction. Then you are given an angle. Let's say we have the horizontal. We have the horizontal. And this is, let's say, 30 degree to the horizontal. This is, let's say, 45 degree to the horizontal. This is 60 degree, so to say. This is 20 degree. Let's say this force is F1, this is F2, 
this is your F3 and this is F4 and you are asked to calculate find the resultant if all these forces are acting at point O this point is your point O you are asked to find the resultant this is also very simple now what we are going to do in this case is that we will resolve all the forces to vertical component sorry to horizontal components we will as well resolve all the forces to vertical components so that we have two forces at the end of the day so these forces f1 f2 f3 f4 is going they are all going to be resolved in the vertical components they are also all to be resolved in horizontal components don't forget when you are resolving forces to horizontal components you take cause of the angle and when you are resolving forces to the vertical component you take sign of the angle but you have to take note of something this on your graph sheet you know this is x direction y this is the minus x direction we also have the other one which is the y the positive y direction and we have the negative y direction we now have four directions now the positive x direction the negative f direction the positive y direction and the negative y direction these are very very important things to take note of so that when you want to resolve to vertical component vertical that's your plus y you know vertical component is the line up facing up you are turning all your forces to turn up that is what you are saying vertical direction in your vertical direction all the forces that falls in the positive y you take positive sign why all the forces that falls in the negative y you take negative sign similarly we are resolving to horizontal direction all the forces that falls in the positive x direction you take positive sign why the rest of the forces that falls in the negative x direction you take negative sign what am i saying now let's look at it now let's resolve f let's have fx that means we are resolving to x direction first our fx is equals to now don't forget since we are doing fx it means we are taking cos of our angle you can start from f1 although in no particular order you can start from anywhere but i want to start from f1 now this is my f1 it falls in the negative x direction so it's going to take a negative sign it will now be minus f1 cos 30 now my f2 it falls on the positive x direction plus f2 cos 45 i move to f3 f3 is also in the positive x direction plus f3 cos 60 then my f4 my f4 it falls in the negative x direction then it will be minus f4 cos 20. then you press this on your calculator whatever answer you have write it down in newton that's the unit for fy you know for fy we're taking sign of the handle now for fy my f1 it falls in the positive side of y so then it will be fy sorry f1 rather f1 sine 30 you are going to take the same angle to the horizontal you are not going to say because we are going for y then you look for the rest of the angle which is 60 here no that's wrong you use the same angle that you use for x so for fy the f1 is f1 sine 30 then my f2 is also at the positive side of the y then you take plus as well plus f2 sine 45 then my f3 is on the negative side of y then to be minus f3 sine 60 as well f4 is also negative side of y minus f4 sine 20 whatever answer you have write it down let us take for instance that our answer here is maybe um b newton let's take b newton Let's say our answer is B. Then our answer here is C. C new thing, for instance. So now we have been able to resolve the forces, all the forces, we combine everything together to have just two forces at the end of the day. 
Then to find the resultant now, to find the resultant, you just say your R, the resultant R is equals to the square root of B squared plus C squared. And that's all. That's how to find resultant of coplanar forces inclined of all acting at the same point. So we have drawn forces in the same direction parallel to each other, forces in different direction parallel to each other, forces inclined at an angle to each other. Two forces. They will have coplanar forces acting at the point. Then now we can move to unit there too. Can you subscribe and turn on notification so that when I drop the videos of unit vector, you're going to be notified. Thank you.